people are lied to and they think that they're going to achieve something and they think that they're, they're throwing away their entire eternity and they're losing everything um, if they don't go along with the program. They can be coerced, they can be exploited. One organization can feel like they haven't taken all of that person's money because they haven't. But at, by the time everybody's fed from the trough, it's gone. L. Ron Hubbard describes what a real close is and, ca and close is cash in hand at the time of close, period. So if you leave there without the cash in hand, you failed. According to a conservative estimate by the St. Petersburg Times, the International Association of Scientologists, which defends and expands the church, has collected $250 million since 2006. Cynthia Fagan, a former Chicago staffer who worked closely with the IAS for more than 20 years, came to question her role in the organization and the church itself. At first I was, you know, rather zealous about my job and really getting out there and I felt, you know, when I would get someone to want to upgrade their status in the IAS or, you know, make a sizable donation, I felt like I was doing a good thing. And then after a while, with all the different pressures and the different things, because I would would uh, reg someone or ask someone to donate, say, thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars to become a patron of the IAS. The next week, that person was being asked to buy ten thousand dollars worth of books. And then the next week, that person was asked to do something else, and I was just starting to feel that there was so much greed and I just it was making me physically ill actually I just I just couldn't do it anymore and I just looked at the fact that there are people I mean what what members in the Church of Scientology are doing is they are advising people with what to do with their retirement funds with their homes with with their life's finances that would ordinarily take a person having, you know, different securities licenses or various different other financial planning or investment planning licenses or at least training. Former members are mischaracterizing the church's fundraising practices, Scientology spokeswoman Corinne Powell said in a letter responding to questions. The Times has no business intruding on the personal choice of Scientology parishioners to support their religion, wrote Powell. David Miscavige chose a day of infamy to unveil his grand vision for the Church of Scientology. Calling the terrorist attacks a wake-up call, he wrote this letter to parishioners dated September the 11th, 2001. He said Scientology must expand by building new and larger churches called orgs. The way to do better is to get big, Miscavige said. We don't have to have marble and chandeliers in order to do the job to, of helping people. It doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal. These are people's hard-earned dollars. For the next decade, Scientology pursued relentless, all-consuming fundraising campaigns to build those orgs around the world. Church staff was expected to take in the cash to pay for the massive and rapid expansion. When IAS fundraisers were in town, Fagan would drive them to parishioners' homes, often without calling ahead, and sometimes staying after midnight. Maybe it had gotten to the point where the person was like, yeah, yes, I want to do this, after two hours. After watching a video that had been made about what psychiatry is doing with kids, you know, there, there's... There's a ramp up to asking for this money. It's, you know, their person is briefed, they're shown what we're, we're raising the money for and, you know, whatever project we're doing. So, you know, so the person is moved from being in their normal life and what they're doing into, look, here's what we're doing as a crusade in the world and feel it, you know. And so they're brought up emotionally to the point where they're like, yeah, I got to do something about this. And then, then it just becomes all of the logistics of it. And because it's always necessary to get things now, 
to find out how qualified they are. You're going to ask qualifying questions and really invade their privacy to the point of asking every pointed question that you can possibly think of in regards to their finances. How many credit cards do you have? What are the balances on those credit cards? What's your monthly income? What, what's, your month, what's your debt to income ratio? What's your, uh, what's your credit score? Um, you know, do you have any investments? Do you have any stocks? The IS will even take stocks. Church spokeswoman Corinne Powell said that it's against policy to coerce parishioners to donate or show up unannounced at their homes. Fundraisers do not pressure parishioners to go into debt or advise them to rearrange their finances to make donations possible, Powell said. The church also said Scientologists enthusiastically support new ideal orgs and other key church initiatives, including humanitarian and social betterment programs. On a March evening in Chicago, Scientologists had gathered to celebrate L. Ron Hubbard's birthday, so fundraisers were at the event seeking money for both the ideal orgs and the IAS. Outside of the event, we were regging for the IAS, which is separate from the ideal org building. That's what they were doing inside the event. Outside the event, we were talking to people as they came out to pay monies to the IAS. And this woman just came to just sit down and just relax. And someone came up to her and said, um, we need you to make a donation to the IAS. And um, she said, oh, gosh, whew. my husband and I just inside just made a $100,000 donation to the ideal org building. And this person was just like, well, that's great, but that's not the IS, and we need you to make a donation to the IS. And I thought, I was just dumbfounded. My goodness, you know, the person just donated $100,000. It's not just like, what have you done for me lately a week from now? It was like, what have you done for me lately five minutes from then? I just, that's where it just starts to get so extreme. You're not doing it to be evil or destroy that person's life, but you're looking at it from the fact that we're saving the planet. We're, you know, if, if we don't get our job done here, it doesn't matter if your kids have money for school. It doesn't matter these things because there won't be any planet here for them. It's just, it's, it's, the end justifies the means because we're saving the planet. <laughs> So you will push a person to give everything that they have because you're looking at it like that's your job, that's your duty. You're saving the planet. Reporting with Joe Childs and Tom Tobin for the St. Petersburg Times, this is Maurice Rivenbark.